Okay, so let's have a quick look at 15. We've got this random variable here. Give two reasons why a binomial distribution can be used. Well, that's the same old reasons as before. Wow, that's a very thick pen. Uh, because n is large and p is approximately 0 0.5. I mean, it's not really. 0 0.6 is quite far away, but it's close enough. It's not like 0 0.9 or 0 0.1. So if they're telling you why you can use it, you just better say those two things that we've got there. Then it says find using the normal approximation, the probability of these kind of things we've got. So we need to say this is our random variable here. Um, we need to change that. So maybe we now change it to x is normally distributed. We do these two things multiplied together, which is 180. And then we do 180 multiplied by 0 0.4, which is 72. And we were trying to find the probability that y was greater than 150 and less than 180. So when we do the continuity correction, it should be 150.5, and it should be 180.5. And then when you put that into your calculator, I believe you should get 0.5232. Then it wants us to do for part C, the largest value of y such the probability that y is less than y is less than 0.05. So I have, annoyingly, when I've done this before, I've literally just gone straight to the answer. Let me just grab my calculator, though, because I know I'm going to need it today. Here it is. So we should actually find out what the probability is for the normal distribution here. So we're going to find out the probability that x is less than an x value is 0 0.05. So you'll use your inverse normal part that you've got on the calculator here. Um, let me just quickly see where I've got that. So inverse normal distribution, we want it to be a left tail of 0 0.05, where the standard deviation is the root 72, and the mean is 180. And we get that this value of x is 166.04. So if we're going to then use the continuity to correction to go backwards from this, if we're saying the probability that x is less than 166.04, if we change that into a discrete value, it would be the, the, the probability that y is less than or equal to 166. But in the back of the book, they've said that y is 166, haven't they? which is kind of the opposite of what we're saying here. So I think I disagree with what they say in the back of the book. Because, or do I? That is the largest value you can be, though, isn't it? That is the largest value that it can be. But my, my um, discrepancy here is you've got this and you've got this. So if we were going to convert it from being less than or equal to 166, technically it would be the probability that y is less than 167, which would make us think that it was 167. So I'm not quite sure why they've done it in that particular way. Um, so I, I personally think we're right. I think that the answer should be 167. But I don't know. I can't see why they've got that differently. What was the bit that people got stuck on with this question? C. Just C of trying to work out backwards. So if it's asking for this, we just have to use the normal distribution to go in reverse. And then you can go back to the binomial kind of one afterwards with it. Yes? Yeah. I meant. Uh, oh, was it just this one? Yeah. Okay. If you hadn't done that in class, then it was to, to do that one now. So there's only that one that we've got there. Okay. Oh, sorry, this one is different. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I thought this was the same one as the flower one. OK, yeah, so this one that we've got here, it's really, really similar. And both of these are the new spec questions that we've got. So this is a very, very similar thing to the previous one. Do you remember previously we had like a binomial within a binomial? The seed one that we did. We did the P one with the seeds, um, the seeds in trays. So it's the exact same idea. You have to work out the probability that 12 or more scratch cards win. And then you have to do another binomial with two out of the eight stores. And we've got the two conditions so that the n is large and that the probability is roughly 0 0.5. And then when you come down here, when you say that um, at most 122 of these 300 scratch cards are winning, 
this last part down here where it talks about evidence at the 5% significance level is a bit like what we did on the previous question, where I think we found out that the probability of the seeds, that many seeds germinating was like 1.1%, which is less than 5%, so makes us think that their claim is wrong. What actually worked out with this one? What was the probability um, of this one? It was 0 0.07. So because this is more than 5%, it actually means that we shouldn't reject the null hypothesis. And the null hypothesis in this case would be that the company's scratch cards is 45%. However, I've just clocked something here. It says um, that the scratch cards, winning scratch cards, is different from 45%. What do you think is different from 45% is implying? So it's not 45%, which means it means it should be a two-tailed <laughs> hypothesis test. So even though it's not actually going to change our answer, instead of it being compared to 5%, we should be saying that 0 0.07 is greater than 0 0.025, okay? Because it's actually a two-tailed test in, dis in disguise there. So I know I had the mark scheme for this before. I'm hoping I've got that as they do as well. I'm hoping... Did I not put the mark scheme in for it? Yeah. Oh, sorry. So let's just quickly talk through those different things that we've got there. I thought I did. Maybe I just didn't save that page. So you can see that we've got the sense of there being the double binomial that happens, happens at this stage here. We've then got the number of trials is large and the probability is close to 0 0.5. We've got the continuity correction for it being at most 122, which means less than or equal to 122 and you come up with this probability here. And notice how it's greater than 0 .02, uh, 0 0.025 because it's a two-tailed test. So we don't think that the proportion is different to 45% in that case that we've got there. Yeah, Ismail. Um, so that question that you gave us. Yeah. Um, so the trials would be like people, like based on people, and then for your normal distribution, you still have to use the 0.5. You still have to use the, point fi uh, the 0.5s if the data, well, in a binomial, the data will be discrete. And in a normal, we're treating the data as continuous. So we have to do those 0.5s because we're going from something that is discrete to something that is continuous. No, but when you take the binomial distribution like this, uh, when you take a binomial distribution, which is technically actually all of these vertical lines that we have like this, this is what a binomial distribution is. It's these like how long the lines are. When you change it to a normal distribution and you smooth the lines out, instead of just saying how long that line is, we go from measuring the length of the line to the amount of area that there is. So if I was going to talk about the area of this line here, well, the area of the line is zero. That's why you go 0.5 below the line and 0.5 above the line and you're actually finding out the area. So when we talk about binomial distributions, we're just literally saying the length of the line is the probability. When we talk about normal distribution, we can't talk about the length of the line. We talk about the amount of uh, area, which is why actually the axis changes from being probability to probability density, because that's the thing that creates an area and it should remind us a bit of a histogram as well. Any other questions on the ones from the homework? Yeah, Ronak. Yeah, let's just jump back to that. Um, so we just say this round of two for, for certain of cases because I get different numbers if I keep the whole probability. Yes, if you keep the whole probability, um, they yours your answer would be similar to this, yeah. I'm presuming. So it would be completely accepted as well. It would also be clear from your method that you've kept the, the longer values of the decimals as well. I mean, they seem to be using the fact that um, they seem to be like rounding some of them as you go through because the probabilities, what did you get as your one, just out of interest? 0.30084. Uh, zero, 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 and, you, and you've done the exact same method. You think it's just slightly different? I got the top number, 0 0.1307. Zero, I just kept them with like a couple of numbers. And, that's, and then everything else you've done the same. Yeah. You definitely did the, of greater than or equal to two. That's really weird that it's quite, it's quite a bit different then, isn't it? Yeah. OK, well, I think in theory, you should be, it would be fine because you're doing it more accurately, as long as you've made it clear that you've written down a few more of the, the digits so they know that those are the ones that you're using. But if in doubt, like four decimal places seems to be the common theme that they're using for all of these kinds of questions that we've got here, OK?